Uh, so what's going to happen this evening, um, we're going to introduce what the project looks like, how we got there, first of all, what the project looks like, and then hopefully the folks from the room will be here. If they're not, we'll open up for public comment. When they get here, uh, we can suspend, hear their presentation, and then you can ask questions specific to uh, to that project. I have a sneaking suspicion, given Saturday's uh, meeting, that there may be more questions that are unrelated to the specific project. Uh, I do apologize for the heat. It's actually warmer than it was in the school on Saturday. It gives you any comfort, but um, it is still cold. Uh, the heat is on, and hopefully it's a big room. It'll take a while to heat up, and I think we'll be here for a while anyway, so we may see it actually warm up. So anyway, so um, last year, the year before last, uh, the select board um, formed a space needs committee to look at the needs of um, the Rollinson Police Department. It's, it's no surprise to most people that there are there are some issues that have uh, been going on for a number of years with the police station as it exists in the basement of the town hall. So because of that, um, the select board at the time wanted to look at options. And so they formed a committee. Uh, folks that are the newest iteration of that committee that we're working on it are Denise Knowles, who represented the select board, Kim St. Uh Bill Irving, Charlie Putnam, and uh, Chief Dusharn. And we thank them for their, for, for their service. Um, they were charged with looking at uh, the needs of the, of the police department. Um, they reported back to the select board last Thursday, Thursday, right? Last Thursday, um, with a plan, a uh, plan you see before you. If you don't have copies of it, they're on the table over there, um, of a combination police department and town hall facility. Um, we've had this as long as most of you, maybe a few more days if you only got it on Saturday. So what I'm going to do then is to turn it over to Chief Ducharme to explain a little bit how, more background about how we got here. But I did want to lay some of the ground rules real quick too. Um, if you have questions, please raise your hand. You need to state your name and where you live. Uh, just your street number, your street address uh, for, the, for the record. Um, because if we do move forward with this project, um, uh, we need to have a very thorough record of, uh, of this meeting for our bond council uh, to prove that we went through certain steps. Uh, so with that, and I would ask you please to direct your questions to the chair of the board. Um, please, if you hear something you don't like someone else say, it's not your meeting. You can yell at them out in the parking lot if you want to, but um, you need to please just direct your questions or your anger, your concern, any of that, to the select board, and we will either answer directly or redirect it. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chief Dusharm. Well, we, want the microphone. we only have one, so I, I can yell if you don't mind. Okay. And when it does come time for ask questions, if you'd like to, just please come up and get the microphone. It's going to be over here, and we'll let you ask the question. Good evening, folks, and thanks for thanks for coming out tonight. Just as a, as a, a little bit of a historical perspective, as, as uh, Mr. Rollo had said that I would do. Tonight is actually the third such attempt by the folks in town since 1970 to, to either talk about renovating the town hall or, or demolishing and building a new building. Back in 1970, the select board at the time, they commissioned with a company out of Massachusetts to design a brand new town hall, police department, fire department to be located on Silver Street. And the, the diagram for the outside of the building as well as the floor plan as are actually included on the last two pages of the packet that you packet that uh, has been distributed tonight. So just to give you some historical aspect, of it, this is not the first time that we've tried to do something with the town hall and evaluate and uh, to see if it meets the needs of the of the, of the town. Um, obviously, that plan didn't didn't fall through for some reason. I don't know why. Um, in the mid 70s, the town elected to build a fire station on Roberts Road and put the highway department on Silver Street and renovate the town hall. The renovation that was done at the town hall back in the mid-70s was done by a local resident, a local contractor from town. And it was more of a cosmetic repair as opposed to a uh, complete renovation. Uh, that suited the town well up until the mid-1990s when, um, uh, again, the building fell into disrepair. It looked like an eyesore. For some of you remember, we had that uh, 
that great big ramp on the outside of the building that was for the handicapped folks, and it went around and around and all the way around, and it just didn't make the building look appealing. There was heating issues, there was no air conditioning, there was water issues, and the biggest thing, and what prompted tonight again, it's, it's the police department. We had about 300 square feet and two small offices upstairs, and it really did not meet the needs, didn't meet the needs, excuse me, for modern law enforcement. And additionally, there were a number of liabilities for the police department being in that space, uh, mainly for those who were around back then. Remember, we had that ramp on the outside of the old town hall that uh, had about a 15-foot drop right next to it. And we actually had occasions when we were fighting with folks and they tried to toss you over the railing. So our insurance company looked at that and, and the egress and ingress for the building and some other issues that deemed that the police department upstairs to those two rooms was really a liability issue waiting for the town to happen. So the select board at the time formed a committee and at that time, uh, initially it was just to address the needs again for the, for the police department. And as we went through the process, uh, it was determined that we would not build just a police department, that we actually renovate the town hall. Back then, the folks were adamant that we wanted to fix that, that white building at all costs and make it, to make it fit for the needs. Um, so that brings us to the mid-1990s mid when we had the last renovation of the building. At that time, to renovate the building properly was a minimum bid of $1.2 million to do the building correctly. The town allocated about $700,000 to fix and renovate the building. So we're already starting behind the ball. A number of things were cut out, like insulation, proper windows, and a bunch of other things within the building. And that's what's led to part of the problems that we're experiencing today, with the water issues, the lack of heat, the lack of proper air conditioning, and, and whatnot. So again, so that brings us up to, the, uh, to this point. And since the first year that we moved back downstairs in 1999, we had water issues downstairs. The folks back then said, you're always going to have a water issue, but the, uh, the contractor promised us that we would never, ever have any water issues. Um, originally, they were going to put drainage around the outside of the building. That didn't happen during the, during the renovation. And at times, when it rained hard or when the snow melted in front of the town hall, we actually had a river running through the PD from the front, from the... Uh, Main Street side of the building going out to the back. So the town uh, hired somebody to come in and uh, they said that by putting this lava ash, by injecting lava ash into the ground in front of the building, that would solve all the water issues. Well, it did. A couple of years later, we ended up digging up the inside of the PD on the Main Street side, the parking side, and put in what they call French drain on the inside of the PD. And uh, that helped the situation, but it didn't end the situation. We ended up putting a sump pump right next to the toilet in the men's room, which our insurance, company, which our insurance carrier does not care for. Um, so a number of issues were done uh, to alleviate the problem. And last year, I think it was last year, the town actually put drainage in the front of the building and around the back, and, and it's helped alleviate the problem. So we no longer have the river running through the PD, but what we have now is we have hydraulic pressure pushing the water up through the, um, through the bottom of the PD, through the cement, into, into our space. We used to have runners going down the hallway like they do upstairs in the town home. And we had to take the runners out because the water would accumulate underneath the runner, so when the, when the custodian would come in and clean it, and you move the runner, the bottom of the runner was all wet, and it was, where the runner was on the tile, it was all wet. However, where the runner wasn't, it was, it was dry because it obviously evaporated. There's a slow moisture coming up through the, uh, through the floor. And the 20 years that we've been down there, twice now we've had to jackhammer the floor in certain areas of the PD because it's pushed the floor up so far that you actually, we actually had uh, like a four inch rise out near the front door in the lobby and by the, by the reception area. Uh, right now the floor is rising in the booking room and in the patrolman's room to the point where when you open the booking room door it gets caught on the floor. Um, so use it, but it does get caught on the floor. So it's telling us that the, the pressure is still pushing the floor up underneath the, from the building. Uh, and we actually have several doors that we can't lock properly and play with them and fight with them, whatever, because everything seems to be kind of doing a kitty corner type thing. And if you look at some of the walls upstairs on the town court, you can see what's actually working its way up to the second floor as well. They've got some cracks in the walls upstairs. 
So because of those issues and a, and a myriad of other issues, um, HVA system uh, was not designed properly according to the folks that are, that are, are dealing with the issue now, it wasn't designed properly back then for that building, the heat wasn't designed properly for that building. So this is what's causing a number of problems that we have now with the heat, lack of air conditioning, uh, hot water and, and things like that. So because the, the building now has a whole myriad of issues with the building, uh, again, uh, the select board set up a meeting or a committee to look at the space needs. And originally it was for the police department. And um, the committee met and we actually looked at several sites in the town, one being adding to the fire station. And actually back in the, the, the 90s, we actually looked at the building onto the fire station as well. But back in the 90s, the cemetery was adamant that we weren't taking any land left of the fire station because the cemetery was that. And we look at the right of the fire station, they had their parking lot, and there's just no room to the right um, to build anything over there because the state, the state actually owns a good portion of that, that little corner right there. Additionally, I felt that having a municipal complex uh, about 30 feet from the main railroad line was, was a, an accident waiting to happen. You know, since I've been chief, we've had two major had two major train derailments in town with freight trains, uh, and they do between 30 and 35 miles an hour in town. I can just imagine if we had a, a major accident with the Amtrak going through 70 miles an hour, how far those cars are going to fly off the track. So there's always a possibility that you could lose your emergency services building by having it so close to the, the railroad track. So that's why I've, I personally, I've been against us exploring the idea of attaching it to the, to the fire department. The town owns uh, a, a large parcel of land out in the middle of Skeleton off of Greenview Drive. And um, we determined that really wasn't a good fit. One, because it's way out in the middle of nowhere. And two, to get a, 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 a road to meet today's standards from the edge of Greenview Drive out to that lot was just going to be too cost prohibitive. So that was out. We, looked, uh, we actually talked about Sandy Bank. The Sandy Bank is a small parcel of land and it's kind of in a hollow. And that tells us that there's going to be some water issues because everything else is higher than us. So, so that was uh, 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 thrown out. We talked about a piece of property in Rollins Road that's near the overpass uh, on the Rollins Road side. But the, the, all the neighbors there told us that that field is always wet. Uh, you probably don't see all the cows out there. The field's wet most of, most of the year. So we decided not to do that. The last piece, uh, I, I was uh, talking with some folks who own a large section of land in town's field, hoping to do an even swap with some town property and whatnot, but, uh, but that didn't uh, come to fruition, and so uh, that's, that's not an option for us right now. So having said that, so I said to myself, you know, what does the town own that we can put a building on and not have to pay additional fees to buy piece of property to put the building on. Well, we own the Silver Street property already. Over the last couple of years, the police department and our funds, we, we paid to have the survey done on the property, we paid to have the building torn down, and we paid to have the hazard mitigation taken care of that building, in anticipation that maybe someday something would happen with that property. The committee requested and put out a request for proposals, and we received five back from, from a number of different companies. And of those five, the committee looked at all of them, and we picked two. One was a modular type construction, where they build it off-site someplace, haul it in on a truck, trailer truck, put it in place with a crane. And the other one was the um, insulated concrete form. Right. Um, uh, so, which is actually a cement cement building, cement walls. And um, we had those two come to a public hearing last year, and some of you were there, and they presented their proposals to the committee. And out of those two, we decided to move forward with the ICF method and growing construction um, to go forward through the, through the process here. Uh, so they are here tonight, and they're the ones that actually drew up the plans. Um, initially for the police department, and then secondly for the police department and the town hall being on the second floor on, on Silver Street. So they'll present their plans afterwards. Um, we sent out a survey to all the folks who live on Silver Street from the fire station down to Cricket Lane and the folks on Silver Lane. And it was a very simple survey. One, if, if 
the town authorized the building of a police department on Silver Street at the old highway department, are you in favor or not in favor? And keeping it, and we did indicate that the building would look residential in nature and not look like a commercial building. We received 28 uh, in favors. We received 28 back in favor, one definitely not in favor with no comment. One said it should be police and fire, and one said uh, should stay the town hall and renovate the town hall. So those are the results of the survey, 28 and 1, 1, and 1. We also had a company out of Dover look at the issues with the water, uh, along with a civil engineer look at the issues with the water down, down, downstairs, and they gave us an estimate of almost $700,000 to completely gut the bottom floor, put drainage in <coughs> underneath our floor, and uh, put the walls back in. However, the $700,000 does not include the entire retrofit of our space, nor would they be able to give us a guarantee that that would prevent water infiltration into that uh, basement again. As far as the town hall is concerned, we had a developer come and look at the building. This, this developer takes old municipal buildings and repurposes them. And there is an interest in doing that. Not a guarantee, but he is interested in the building. He was actually interested in the building back in the, in the uh, around 1998 when we went through this process before. But there is some interest in that building. So, so I guess the option here, folks, is if we renovate the town hall or build new, renovating the town hall uh, it doesn't give us any additional space that, that we need and that the town needs upstairs. You're not going to have any additional parking. You're still going to be restricted because we're kind of landlocked, landlocked where we are. We have an apartment building on one side and an apartment building behind us. And I, I can't imagine the town would, um, through eminent domain, uh, take someone's property. I, I just don't think that we want to get into being that type of a neighbor. So. So we have here the folks tonight from Growing that actually submitted the plans, like, as I said, uh, for the first floor, they uh, remodified it because it's now a year later, and they, also, they were also asked to come up with a price and a plan for the second floor for the town hall purposes. Now, the, the, the plans that you have in front of you for the second floor, those are for illustration purposes at this point. I had to give them an idea of the number of offices, offices that would be in that space. So. Um, if the plan went forward uh, through negotiation with the select board and the folks that work up there, I mean, the walls can be moved around. As far as the plans for the police department, as far as I'm concerned, they're pretty much set in stone that the offices are going to be where they are located according to the plan. All right, thank you, Chief. So at this time, we're going to hear from the representatives from the, the construction firm of that the Space Needs Committee uh, recommended to the select board. Uh, move forward. Uh, after they've done their presentation, you'll have an opportunity. We'll open that for public hearing for, for comment period. Um, questions for the for the firm. Probably are best to deal with that first so they don't have to stay all night. We'll stay as long as you want to ask questions of us, but I don't want to keep them all night. So if you folks want to come up here, we only have one microphone tonight, so Thank you. I'll just get started while we're setting that up. I'm Fenton Gruen. Uh, Jeff Greenhalgh is our commercial division manager, and my son Joe is our is our uh, architectural designer. Uh, Joe put together the the plans, the designs for this building. Uh, just a just a few characteristics. Well, first a little bit about our company. We are a family-owned company. We're based in Rochester. Uh, you know where uh, Staples is in Rochester, there's a building right across the street from that, a three-story office building, and we're located in there. Uh, and we actually own that building, and that building is an ICF building, an insulated concrete form, just for those of you who might not know, it's a styrofoam form inside and outside, about two and a half inches thick, and then you pour that, you set that up, put rebar in it, you know, straighten it, get everything ready, pour it full of concrete, once it's full of concrete, 
it's like any poured concrete wall. It has the strength and the and the durability of any concrete wall. The advantage of this is with two and a half inches of, of high density styrofoam inside and outside, the inner core of that acts as a thermal mass. So you keep very, very uniform temperatures, very comfortable. And just just a little bit of the backstory on our building. When we were building the building, we closed it in on November 30th, and we started a construction heater in there. And we had gotten some bids for a construction heater, and they wanted to, us to do a million BTU or a two million BTU construction heater with two different companies. And it was a 27,000 square foot building. We put 150,000 BTU natural gas salamander heater in there. It took about a week to bring it from 35 degrees temperature in the building to, to 55 to 60 degrees. And then after that, that 150,000 BTU heater, and that's about the size of a residential furnace in a house, kept that 27,000 square foot building warm during construction, even with doors open and closed and just lots of traffic. Uh, now that the building is complete, uh, we found that one of our regrets is that we even put natural gas in it because we don't use enough to pay the minimum charges on the bill. Uh, it's just, it's extremely efficient, uses about 35 to 40 percent of the energy of a, of a typical commercial building. So that's our experience. We, we built, uh, a, again, a similar design build project for the town of Farmington. Uh, we did, uh, that is a police and fire building, 19,000 square feet, includes 7,000 square foot apparatus bay and 1,900 square feet of, of uh, living quarters for the, for the firemen. And that building, uh, the, their heat for that building is about $5,500 a year for a 19,000 square foot building, including an apparatus bay that has what is it, four doors in the front, four 14 by 14 foot doors in the front and two in the back. And, uh, and it just, it, it's actually using about one fifth of the energy that their combined police and fire were using before in their old buildings. Uh, this building is also ICF, whether it be one story that it started out as, as, as the police station or two story as, as police and, uh, and town hall. Um, just some other advantages of the ICF. The sound level, it's extremely quiet. It's almost sound studio quality um, sound blocking uh, because of the styrofoam inside and outside. It's very comfortable. You'll have uniform heat throughout the building. Uh, you don't get, it's it, almost no draft. Uh, and we know that again from personal experience in our building, no matter where we are in the building, it's just, comfortable uniform heat and uh, and then you know of course the energy efficiency but then one added aspect for an essential building like place and town hall is it's extremely safe it's very durable uh, the obviously windows would be a would, would be a point that you know somebody could break in or or whatever but they won't come through the walls it would take uh, a tank to come through the walls. Uh, they are extremely strong, they're reinforced with, uh, with steel, and then they're solid concrete. So th those combined things, it's just a, a real advantage to have this. Um, the building that's being proposed for, for the, the two-story building is uh, 13,381 square feet. Uh, it comes to 144, almost $145 a square foot. Um, a big, big advantage of design build is that we look at this and we we knew what your budget was. We've been talking to the chief for what is it, two years now, and uh, we knew what the budget. We knew that you have a limited budget, and we don't add what's not necessary. Uh, one of our one of our frustrations sometimes with a with a building that starts out architecturally designed. And by the way, we have nothing against architects. We work with them. We we team up with them on many projects. But sometimes they put more expensive things in there than you need. Uh, we've had the experience in the past that. You know, you, you have $400 bathroom sinks and $450 toilets and $400 bathroom faucets. It's not necessary. You can get very high quality bathroom sink for $150 to $160. 
and it's colder and it's good quality. And we stick with that because we know there's a budget. And so we work very hard with you and that we go through the design build and carry that through. When, and, and the, the phase that we're at, the point that we're at right now is the completion of, of the concept phase uh, and the pricing. And we've, we've done a very thorough uh, analysis of the pricing. Uh, we're confident of the pricing. If you gave us this building today at this price, we would contract for it and build it for that price. Um, the, that part is complete. We still have to finish the design development, which there, you know, there'll be engineering and, and a, an actually an architectural stamp on the building. Um, on the site itself, because the site is less than an acre, you, you do not have to have uh, civil engineering done on the site uh, or site plan done by a, by a licensed civil engineer. You can choose to do that. That's not included in the proposal. You can choose to do that. Uh, but the town also has the authority to waive it. You will not only save the costs of that, but in many cases that goes right back into that same aspect that it can add a lot of costs in the process. Now we're not talking to cutting corners or, or making shortcuts. What we do, we'll work very closely with your code enforcement and we'll make sure that everything is done properly. We know the water problems you have now, we're not going to take any risk with that. Uh, there will be proper drainage, everything else, but that's a choice that, that you make as a town as to whether you want to go through the full civil engineering on the site. Uh, after, after we've gone through that part then, uh, and it's completed, then we go to uh, completing the construction drawings of this. That whole process would be about 12 weeks. So if you approve this in March, uh, about the middle of June, we would be, it, it would be ready to go to construction. With permitting, etc., we could probably be in the ground, likely be in the ground by July 1. Um, so that's, that's some of the background of this. Um, you see the building there. Uh, if you have you know, any questions, that we'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Jeff is our project manager. Jeff, is there anything you want to add to this? So any, you know, rather than me just keep talking, why don't you ask questions if you have any questions? Yes. You need to sorry, you need to say your name and what your what's your name? including the, uh, the garage for the police cars. Yes.
least expensive is building it on a slab. Uh, I'm not sure about the drainage on the site, and I think that if we started digging down, you might might have issues with that. Uh, but this does not include a basement. Yeah, That, that would really be up to the town. Uh, you know, that was not in the request, and that's not part of the design. And again, if, if that were to be considered, you would have to, then we would have to very carefully evaluate the site and look at the seasonal high water tables and make sure that you don't run into the same problem that, that you currently have. Um, cellular pool, Washington Street. So, has the drainage plan been done yet, or are you waiting till we pass this? A drainage plan for the site? Yeah. It, it has not, and again, we'll, we'll work with you on that. My other question follows up on what I asked earlier. How hard is it to expand the building in the future if it's ICF, if we wanted to add another department to it, like the highway or the fire Well, it's not difficult. Your, your limitation is going to be your site size there, uh, but it's not difficult to add to it. Um, you extend walls, uh, extend the floors, extend the roof, and uh, with, the, with the concrete walls, uh, obviously it's not quite as easy to cut through. You can't do it with a sawzall like you can with wood, but it's not difficult to cut concrete. Um, you get a, a, somebody that specializes in cutting concrete and you can cut holes in the walls and, and open up to a new space if you want to do that. And I'm not sure if you can answer this or the chief needs to answer it, but is there enough space in the garage for all of the current police vehicles? Yes. Thank you. Current, currently, yes. <coughs> Hi, Wendy Chase, um, Short Street. Question about the storage, that kind of has me intrigued. There's not a cellar, that's fine, but is there an attic, or how much room are you going to need for storage? I mean, it's got to be space. The, the design for the, for the police facility, uh, we have adequate storage that we need based upon the rooms that are there now. Okay. Um, the upstairs at this point is, is humongous for the, for the town offices. I mean, they, they can set a side off, uh, a side off from one side or the other, just for storage. There's the opportunity for them to enlarge the conference room that's up there, so you could uh, actually, instead of having meetings down here, you'd be able to have them on the second floor up there. I mean, because this is a trust system, uh, you can take walls within within the interior and move them wherever. Okay. So. Just just an add to that. One of the advantages of this to the to the modular, the modular had a, had a load-bearing wall, uh, I think it was every 16 feet. This is free-span trusses, so anything inside the building uh, can be moved around. Now, the, the floor system of the first floor is going to be supported by interior walls, so once that's decided where those walls will be to support the floor system, then those have to be maintained. But on the second floor, between the second floor and the roof, it'll be free-span, and the walls can be moved anywhere you like it. If you should be lucky enough to get the contract, what kind of a warranty are we going to get? We have a standard one year uh, full uh, bumper to bumper, so to speak, uh, warranty on the building. Any further one for, like we'll say, ventilation? The ventilation systems, any of the mechanical systems, have manufacturer's warranties that go, you know, extend out beyond that. Uh, windows, for example, uh, have have a, uh, anywhere from a 15 year to a lifetime warranty. Um, and, uh, you know, so those, those go beyond that. Our warranty is designed to cover, it, it's designed to make sure that everything is done, working, and if everything is working well at the completion of a year, it's going to last a long time after that. And again, I, I, I'll, I'll compared to Farmington. Farmington has been in use now for two years, right? For two years, um, we've had a couple of extremely minor callbacks uh, in the first year and, uh, and nothing since that. Uh, our building is four, four and a half years old and we have, well, the, the biggest 
problem that we had with our building is when a two foot pine tree blew over against the building and just scratched the outside on the, against concrete, it didn't do any structural damage to the building. But other than that, it, they're, just, they're just solid. Do you have all your own people that work for your company or do you sub the work out to HVAC, windows, carpentry, etc.? The, the uh, subcontractors in mechanical, plumbing, electrical, mechanical, drywall, we subcontract. Uh, we will do, we have our own crew for ICF and framing, uh, and uh, you know, we'll subcontract the roofing, um, but we have, a, we have a just very trusted subcontractors, most of whom we've been working with for years and years and years, and we, we pay them, we pay them on time, and they like working for us, and we like them working for us, and they meet our standards. Richard. It's Witcher. Witcher. We have not. We've competed against them. But uh, no, they're not a subcontractor of ours. Uh, what do you do with the heat? Jeff? The heat? Yeah. So it's uh, our gas fired furnaces and uh, AC. Yeah, I, think, I think I can speak on it. Okay. Gas fired furnaces and uh, AC throughout the building. Well, in, in our building, we, we would have used a different type of heat. You have a different situation here with, with, uh, the, with your traffic situation and, and you know, the number of people in and out of the building, plus you have your, your you know, you have a garage for your police cars with big doors opening and closing, a sally port, etc. Um, so, again, the, this is propane. Uh, you won't be paying any minimum charges on that. And uh, so I think I think it's the right way to go for this building. John what about security systems, alarms, so forth? Is that included in the price of this? No, I, I didn't. No, that's not our. That's not in our part of the building. Yes, the fire alarm. The fire alarm is included with the price of the building in the contingency and uh, equipment section that's added. To your packet there, that would include you know, telephone, security, alarms, things like that. Furnishings, equipment. Who are you using for contractors for the fire system, uh, HVAC, and subcontractors? What are they actually have to We We will, first of all, when, you know, if you approve this, this will all be bid out. Uh, Local contractors will have a chance to bid. Uh, they're welcome to bid. Um, if, yeah. Uh, again, I'll let Jeff speak to that as to the ones that we've generally used in that area. Sure. Um, you, you referring to Farmington that he uh, mentioned previously. Speak up. Um, yeah, um, in, in the past, the local uh, contractors that we have used uh, for electrical, for example, is uh, WC Coal Bath out of Dover. We've used that quite a bit. Uh, with our HVAC, we've used uh, RTH Mechanical and the Boost Heart uh, is, are the ones that we typically use. Plumbers would be uh, Mark Canning, who's a, a local uh, plumber. I'm trying to think up there who else we, would, we use um, for painters. We probably would work with uh, either White Diamond or Peak Painting. Um, those are the ones we've worked with in the past. Sprinkler contractors, we usually bid that out, and that's pretty generic. Uh, Superior, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, Superior is generally our lowest bidder, uh, fire protection systems, etc. And there again, we, we can't say definitively who we use because if Superior, we normally get very good pricing from them and we work well with them. Uh, However, if they just got three big jobs, they're going to price it up. And uh, so, so then, you know, somebody else would likely get the little bit on that. Is that a dryer or a wet system? It's a wet system. It's a wet system. 
And for those of you that wonder what that means, a dry system is doesn't have water in it unless a uh, head activates, and then it'll release and let water in the system. In other words, it's pressurized with air, and it, it only gets water in if if it calls for for that. It's a more expensive system if if uh, if all of the fire suppression system is in conditioned space, you don't need to have a dry system, then it's a wet system. And that's another thing that we do is um, on, the, on the second floor uh, above the offices, we have a, a high ceiling for the trusses. We put drywall on the bottom side of the trusses. We put all of the mechanical, uh, the, the HVAC systems and the fire protection system, etc underneath the drywall, underneath the insulated roof system, and then we put a suspended ceiling under that. So all of those mechanical systems are in conditioned space, not in an unconditioned attic. And we, we, we think that's extremely important for reliability and for efficiency down the road. So Leopold, can, what, based on square footage, what is the maximum capacity for the single floor plan and the second floor plan of people. I don't know that number, and I think when one of the things that we do as we go along, you know, that one of the next steps is we engage a, a licensed architect, and that architect does a code review, and that will that will tell that. But I, I can't give you that number, Joe. Are you, and we just don't have that number right now. That's a nice segue. Um, I'm a little bit confused about what well, this has been an interesting uh, presentation. What? Oh, sorry. Angela Matthews, 437 Mocha Street. So um, I, I was at the hearing on uh, Saturday, the budget hearing, and um, there were a lot of questions raised that I still don't feel have been sufficiently answered. So I, these are, I think, questions for the uh, select board. What is the dollar impact on the tax rate? I haven't seen any amortization schedules for the 30-year cycle of this bond issue. Um, I see this is a, for me, this is sort of like way ahead of where my thinking is in the process, but I might get on on this. Um, the, um, yes. So, um, I'm going to try to answer your questions, but if, if can you, do you mind just holding just for a moment? Are there any other questions for the construction firm? Um, if not, I think we, we will excuse them. So I don't think you need to listen to the conversation about, you can't if you want, to listen about bonding. But I think it's, if, I, I'm going to get to your question. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. Please listen. Will there be a list put out of the five drivers? Yeah, we will. Yes, we will bid it out. We'll you know, have it open to bid. And anybody is welcome to bid on it. No, I mean, Yes. Uh, so, Leopold, from your perspective, does it matter whether the police department or the town administration is on the first floor? It, it, that's something. That's something. It, they'll fit into place in in one sense, but it's rather hard to put a sally port, which is where the police car brings <coughs> prisoner, etc. It'd be hard to put that on the second floor. Okay. Okay, any other questions for, for the folks from the growing? Yes, please. Uh, Eric Boss, Main Street. What's the uh, maximum allowable parking spaces based upon you guys right there? I, you, you know what the parking well, we have 10,400 square feet, you know, which is probably 50 plus or minus parking spaces, depending on the traffic layout and, and access to the the garage is at, at the rear. Uh, are we push the building way to the left now? Yes. Okay, so we have to relook at that because originally we were going to go around the left and then leave just the parking alone. So um, we'd have to, when we get to the site plan, we would do that. The targeted number based on the square footage is 50 of, of paved area, but we'd have to define it. Yes. So with regard to, I guess there will be a lot of asphalt if there's parking. So it occurs to me having worked with the NS4 permitting process, 
how are we managing the runoff from that, from all of that asphalt? Well, that's part of the, when we get to the, the site uh, and civil review for the, for the site and analysis of, of the site, um, our proposal was based on a generic site, not a, you know, um, a sloped or a, a wooded or whatever to put this through. So that's why Fenton mentioned, we have to wait till we get through to that to do that. I can just follow up. So is that a, a civil engineering study that you, that you suggested would be optional on our behalf? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. But, all right, if it's not optional, if we feel we need to do it because of the addition of all of this asphalt, <coughs> how much would that be? I would it'd be in the neighborhood of $15,000. I would say 15, I think 20 max. I mean, you're, this is a small site, it's quite simple. Uh, the soils appear to be good, but I think fifteen to twenty thousand would cover that. Uh, Do you have an estimate of the annual operational cost of it, including like inspection, general maintenance? Any idea what that would run per year, like doing seal coating, restriping the logs, elevator inspections, fire inspections? Have anybody done any cost analysis on that? For our for our building, and we have several <coughs> parking spaces. We have a building that's twice the size. Um, our I'm trying to uh, add up numbers from our financial statement in my head, but I think with the striping, uh, snow removal, <coughs> all of that combined is in the neighborhood of twenty five hundred dollars a month. And that's that's and for us, snow removal and landscaping is a significant number because we, we don't have a lot of room to we have to move snow off, and uh, so that that becomes an issue there. But uh, that's that covers everything on ours. Okay. Are there any other questions regarding the the, the, the plan that that the, these folks are are, are presenting? Yeah. yeah. Okay, one more. Um, based on the site, it cannot be done on one story, correct? Correct. So, again, last call. Any other questions on the physical? Yes, of course, Hi, Lorraine Hansen, Watson Lane. I just have one question, and that is, is this type of building, can it ever be a three-story building? Can you do it with an ICF with this design? Yes, it can. Uh, to add a third story, later on to this would be expensive. It always takes to take something apart. To make a three-story building in the first place, absolutely. We are currently in the approval phase for a five-story ICF building at Dover right now. <coughs> Hi, again, Short Street. Could you tell me what is the outside of the building consist of or what type of roofing is siding? It would be it would be asphalt. Uh, roofing, standard asphalt shingles, uh, lifetime shingle on there. And, and, you know, when you say lifetime shingle, it's not. That's the shingle manufacturer's warranty. Uh, it's really 25 years is roughly what that would last. And then uh, vinyl side. Any other construction questions? All right. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, we're going to move into the next phase of questioning. And so, Angela, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Your first question was about uh, about what the uh, impact on the tax rate is. Yes, so thank you. I was looking at a whole array of questions that seem still uh, The question is whether the city of Manchester building, what the second building is going to be. It seems like this is a concept. She did she can respond, but not exactly. I don't feel confident responding to this as a plan in terms of a bond issue. So I can use the concerns I'm raising at this point. Interesting presentation. Is this what we're moving head on? So I'm, I'm a little bit contractors and who's going to do the work feels so further ahead in the thinking than I am right now. So my question is all about a lot of unanswered um, elements. All right, so so where we're in the process into that part first. Um, the Space Needs Committee um, presented the option of a combined police 
and town hall facility. Um, because of scheduling, because of um, uh, requirements by state statute that go along with um, with uh, the official ballot referendum voting that we do, the SB2, uh, commonly called it, this is the only version we can bring forward at this time. Um, if the board chooses to place it on, on the ballot. Um, that hasn't been decided yet by us. We, we chose to vote unanimously to send it to public hearing. I think it's important for everyone to hear, but we have not had a del deliberation yet on this proposal. Um, so that's, the, that's where we're at. That's why we're only discussing this option at this point. Um, you originally asked, though, about the impact on the tax rate. It depends on how much we bond. I can tell you that the interest rate right now looks like it's four and a half percent, and if we were to bond 2.4 million approximately, it looks like it's about 69 cents uh, on the tax rate the first year, and it does go down clearly because uh, you're paying off the, off the bond and, and the interest. Uh, if it was for the full two and a half million that has been discussed, it's 75 cents. Again, it would go down every year thereafter um, until the bond is paid off. I'm trying to think, did you ask anything else that I didn't answer? I'm sorry. Uh, and I do apologize for cutting you off. No, no, we were hoping okay. to have all the other questions done. So. It's okay. I uh, spoke out of turn out of order. No problem. Uh, all of it is, I, I had a, a lot of questions about the engagement of, of, of why are simple people getting input to the design and to the decision about uh, moving offices together. I have those kinds of questions, which felt unanswered on Saturday and still are not resolved today, which makes me feel like we're more in concept mode than in implementation mode. So the, um, okay, I, I, I understand your frustration. Uh, we were presented with this plan on last Thursday. So, um, pardon me two Thursdays ago, I'm sorry, ten days ago, my apologies. Um, so, um, there is a, in ten days, there was enough time to notice the, the public hearings on it, uh, this year at one of them. Uh, there have been, though, I will say, for, for the Space Needs Committee, um, two years' worth of meetings that are always noticed, um, um, that any, and they're always open to the public, so people can't go to them. And they did have a... Um, a public hearing this past summer. I can't remember exactly what month it was, and I went to it. Um, but um, and it was about as many people in the room now as it was then. Maybe a few more people, but not that many more. Um, which I think is kind of sad to be honest, because it's, it's, we're asking to spend a lot of money. There's not a whole lot of folks here. But those of you that did come, thank you. I should, I should have led with that. Sorry. Um, I would try to be positive. But so. I believe there are some unanswered questions that the board still are just trying to understand ourselves. So I think we share your frustration in that sense. But there have been opportunities, though, to 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 uh, learn more about the process as it went along. Please go ahead. Uh, Judy Nelson, you're on the board. Again, sir, piggyback on uh, what Angela had to say. Uh, I think there there do appear to be a lot of unanswered uh, questions at this point. And the time frame for the voters, and even for the board, uh, the select board to make a decision is short, especially given, I, I think, we, we, we're new to the SB2 process and the timing of everything. And to get all the uh, answers that we might like to have to move forward, the time is very short. I love the concept of the building. I have a few concerns about the site and, and some other ways of how things are going to unfold bit by bit. But, um, I think in order to create uh, a warrant that, with all of our questions more or less answered, um, what will bond council cost, what will, you know, a number of things like that, that we haven't really, um, all, all the paperwork for the bonding uh, to go forward, again, that there's an awful lot that has to happen. I guess that doesn't happen until after the, uh, the, the public weighs in. But for myself, um, I am going to suggest strongly um, that you consider putting this on hold uh, for another year and that we fill in some of those details uh, so that the town can make a fully, uh, have a full understanding of the decision for two and a half million dollars. I think someone wants to talk to you anyway. Um, so this is the third meeting that we public have had. Um, and I hear people saying that they have a lot of questions. These are the 
the times to ask the questions. So I'll ask Matthew and, uh, and Judy, ask your questions, because how many more public hearings do we need to have on this, uh, where the same group of people attend and nobody asks anything? So ask the questions and let's try to answer. I think I said at the beginning that we're not going to use, we're not going to pit one another against one another. So if there are questions, let's we'll take a look at this one. This is the form for the questions. I got a question. Excuse me. I got a question for you. Exactly what have we got for a choice? It looks like we're stuck. We're so straight with this proposal. And there's a choice of where do we go? Police department? Police department and town hall. Is that what we got? A or B? And at this point in the process, you only have um, one choice. You don't have both. Um, because yeah. the way it has to be, the public hearings have to be noticed. Um, um, within a certain time frame, and we're butting up against that time frame. It's we only have a couple other days. It's a two-story building on this a is it. street or nothing. If we move this forward, that is correct. I think Silver Street is a bad location. I said it Saturday and I'll say it again. We lost our auction there when the townspeople voted not to buy that lot that that home was built on to the west side of Silver Street. Suzanne here with Lord Lane. So uh, I said some of this on Saturday and I, I will say it again. I, I support the, the project, the, the process of looking at solutions for our space needs. I don't feel that we have, and, and what's been done today is necessary. I don't think it's sufficient. And there's a lot of things that we still don't know. One of the major pieces is, you know, what uh, Sonny just alluded to, what are other options? And we haven't priced out what it would cost us to um, renovate Town Hall. And and if I look at, the, the, you know, the space needs, the sort of generalized space needs that we did in 2015, I think, it lists some deficiencies. It doesn't have a price tag associated with them, so we don't really know what they would cost. And it seems to me if the cost of doing that is $3 million, that makes a difference to how we think about this. If the cost is $1.5, $1.8, even $1.9 million, I think it makes a difference. And the truth is, we don't know what that is. We haven't taken the time to do it. And also, if we are think, if that turns out to be a viable option, I don't know that it is. There are a lot of issues with town hall, so I don't know. But that's the point. I don't know. And I think I should know in order to make a really considered decision. But if it looks like it is feasible, plausible, then we have that piece of land which has some value that we could sell and put towards the cost of renovating town hall, if that is the answer. So it would also be a good idea to have that land appraised. That's another piece of information that I think it would be helpful for us to know. And that is, what is the value of that piece of land on Silver Street if we were, if we thought we could sell it and put towards these uh, renovations? And to go back to that study that was done in 2015, I did go back to look at it in preparation for the meeting. And uh, sort of the conclusions at the end, near the end of the, the slides that were presented, had to do with town hall and police station overall impressions. One, adequate size to host, to host both police and town hall. Inaccessibility of both police and town hall needs to be addressed. I think we know that that elevator is really very difficult. The police department is in need of safety upgrades and building health improvements. We also know that, although we have, since this was done, put in uh, uh, mold remediation issues, and we did do drainage on uh, some of the more vulnerable sides of the building. There's an opportunity for expanded town use in the current town hall, but there is significant repair and upgrades that are necessary. So it would be interesting to know what the cost would be for those repairs and upgrades in order to think about and compare whether, which is a really very nice looking building, I have to say, but to compare, again, what what are our choices? I mean, this is a really big financial investment. Is it, is it 2.5 million for that? Is it 3 million for this? Or again, 1.7, 8, 9 million. I think it would be cool us to know that. Um, I just love this whole thing. 
time because I went out. I just left the select board in March. My term was over. Um, so just some information of what has happened in the town hall in the last several years. Um, I was the one that did the fire inspections with Deputy Chief Hurt. And the sprinkler systems on a regular floor are not in the right spot. So where Suzanne used to sit was not safe. <laughs> um, they don't meet any of the requirements. Um, the ADA lift does not work well in the cold. It's supposed to stay in the up position in the cold weather. Is that still a problem since I left? It has a personality. Okay. We know what it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The third floor does not have any current electrical system. I, there's still wire and tube. Um, you can see through the walls into the siding. There's no insulation in most areas. You're not supposed to be on the third floor at all, although we store some of our tax stuff up there. Um, per fire code, when I walk through it with um, the deputy chief, um, not all walls have insulation and windows. You, if you ever sat by one, you know they're not working. <laughs> um, the third floor, um, if you were to keep it, you have to reinforce all the beams um, and everything to create. You're not even supposed to be up there. When, when you walk across it, it's kind of scary. <laughs> but it is a beautiful building. I absolutely agree with you. It is a beautiful building. But to save it, I, I can't see it being cheaper than this option. Not done. Boiler still needs to be fixed. Second floor, not enough electrical outlets for the equipment that they do use. They are using inspection cords, which are not allowed by fire code. So those have to be changed. Um, we did the water drainage problem on the outside of the building. Engineers came in and gave us a plan for the outside and the inside of the building. The select board at the time, including myself, chose to only do the outside of the building. Not pulling up the whole floor like Chief was just saying. The select board decided to do just the outside of the building and the construction company came in to double, dig out the outside of the foundation. They thought it was brick going all the way down. Underneath that brick are large, large boulders because that's the way they built them in the 1800s. The boulders were much larger than they expected. The engineer came back. Even the engineer was, wasn't expecting that. The construction company rep, 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 recommended three options. To place stone, place stone with pressure-treated pressure wood, then a thick plastic barrier, then more stone on top. Option three was to pour an external foundation at about $60,000, which was the proper way according to code. Um, and the engineer said that was the best option. Um, the select board decided to go with plan two with the wood and the plastic. Um, I was against it because I knew the ground was open, let's fix it, let's fix it once. But there wasn't enough money in the budget. Um, we didn't go underneath the stairway because moving the stairs would have been too much. We only did those corner walls. Once again, remember there's still water coming up through the floor. Um, work that recently completed, we did do the membrane roof over the new part of the police station. That was $13,000. We did the steeple, which whew, I want to say it was $22,000. <coughs> um, I did get an estimate on the remaining part of the roof, which was $66,000. And that was in October 2017. Um, this is a long talk, but I can't understand if you want to. Stop okay, I'm having trouble hearing you. So much. I was almost done. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost set. So um, we did try to buy the land. We did have a public hearing next door, and the, the town voted it down. We did every option we could when I was on the board to try to buy pieces of land to fit. So um, our current staff, our current staff is we have a town administrator. We have a bookkeeper part time. We have a part time um, assistant. So. It's in the budget. Right. But I thought they were per diem right now. I had a tent for like three weeks. Oh. That's, that's, that's okay. We have a building inspector that inspector that has a tiny little team. Um, our town treasurer, our three selectmen, planning planning room board, um, the planning room 
is a disaster, you know. <laughs> He's looked down. Um, and if we have any subdivisions going on or anything that, that the planning board is doing, there should be easels of what they're working on in town hall. So if you go to Dover, if you go to Summersworth, the easels are up and showing you what they're being worked on. So I just wanted to give you a little history of what's been going on in the last couple of years. In 2017, just our heating, electric, water, and minor maintenance was 44,000. In 2018, two, yeah, 2018 was 38,000. This year it's estimated for 30,000. And that's just to keep the doors open. So that is something to think about. So we sat on this. We, they gave us a, a first floor, and as a select board, we sat on it. I wanted to put it to town vote. So then I went to committee. Now they recommend the second floor, which I totally agree with. I really think it's time. I love that building. I really do. I think the second floor is beautiful. But it, we don't have the money to fix it. We really don't. Thank you. So then, well, I have to respectfully disagree. Use the mic, I'm going to let you go first and then you can go. So do you want the microphone or do you yeah. My name is Jack Boyle. Uh, I live on Clement Road. And the only thing I want to say is time is money. We keep spending time on this. And you can study things to death. And I, and I think the, you know, the cost and the expenses are going to continue to go up. Real quick, Herb, you already heard some withdrawn. To follow up with this question, does that tax increase include the offset that you would realize from the cost that Joey described? Or is it just the flat price of the bond, not you know, considering the offset of the That is just the flat cost of the bond. It doesn't have any offsets associated with it. Suzanne Hewitt, Nordic Lane. So, I don't know what those numbers are. I know that there are deficiencies, and I think what I was suggesting was not a piecemeal uh, approach. What I was thinking of was having a, an engineering consultant, a building engineer, I don't know what the professional person is, to come in, take a look at town hall, and say, just like what they did with the school uh, several years back, RGS, and it came in with a very big price tag. Same thing may happen here, but I don't really know that. And what if it doesn't come in at three million? What if it comes in at one point seven? But I'm talking about somebody coming in and bringing this up to a point where it's aesthetically pleasing, environmentally or uh, uh, energy efficient, all of those things with uh, optimum uh, re-engineering space in the building so that we're using optimum space. That's what I'm talking about. I don't think we've ever run those numbers. We know some piecemeal what somebody said it would cost us two years ago to do this and what somebody said now to do that. But as far as a comprehensive look at what it would cost to bring Town Hall up to uh, where we think it should be, I don't, we've not done that. And with regard to the planning board, I don't think new space is, is you know, a problem with material on the planning board. is not, not just the space needs. It's staffing and personnel to try to keep all of that stuff organized. Thank you. Just trying to be miles. All right, and then... Yeah. Lorraine Hansen, Watson Lane. Uh, my concerns have been um, mostly about the fact that it seems to me that we're rushing ahead to try to get something done before we're really ready. Once we've had the idea of perhaps moving Town Hall completely, which is a great idea, perhaps, and I agree with Suzanne Heward on this, um, it's probably a good idea, but we can't compare it to anything. We have nothing to compare it to, as she says. We don't know what it would cost to bring the Town Hall up to snuff, so to speak. And that's my concern. The other concern I have is I noticed on the plans that we have seen so far, is the Banwell study done in 2015, I think it was, suggested that the police department should have a square footage of around 8,500 square feet. And this particular plan that we're looking at, because of the problem with the site, 
puts the police department at less at a thousand square feet less than what was recommended. That may or may not be problematic when we're looking toward uh, a future for the police department because we don't want to be in a position where if we build it that by the time we paid off the bond we got to start over. I think that's a concern. The other concern I have is that all of the work that the Space Needs Committee has done, which has been excellent to date, the problem is they've never even had a chance to address the space needs of the administrative services at Town Hall. They haven't looked at that until very recently when someone talked about putting a second floor on. So we don't know if the square footage in the um, new building would be sufficient or if it would be sufficient for the Town Hall years to come, not to mention the other issues about what do we do with the other town halls if, if we did in fact move out of it, or the cost of moving, which had been already raised, the time of the downtime if you're not um, in a situation uh, where you're providing services to the town while there's a move going on. So there's all of those questions that I would really like to have answered before we start paying bond council to go forward. And it seems to me that, and I agree with everybody who says the new building is just really a lovely idea, I'm really worried about going forward without having those, that information down and solid before we start paying bond counsel and going forward. Because I agree that money, that time is money, but at the same time, I don't want to be in a situation where we're paying bond counsel and moving forward and finding out we're not meeting our needs, that by the time we've paid off the bond, we're going forward with needing more, more space or more something. I just don't want to go there. Thank you. So you have to Washington Street. I, it was suggested that this is the time and place to ask questions. So I have several questions that I'm hoping the board and the chief can answer. What happens if this doesn't pass? Do we go back to square one? Does another option come forward in the future? Um, what are the options for town hall? Can we use it for another entity like the library, the SAU office, if necessary? We have a list of that, so. Yeah. All right. What's, uh, what was your first question? I'm sorry. What happens if this plan fails at the board? If, if the select board chooses to place it on the ballot, and it doesn't pass, then nothing happens. You're back to where you started from. Second question. Um, we start over, I suppose. Actually, it's part of the better way to describe it. If this passes, can the town hall be used for the library or other entity by the town, an SAU office or some other form? I don't know. Um, we have not looked at that. Um, there are designated 31 spots, I heard. At that, are the, and I see three to five handicap spots. Are there designated visitor spots or like police spots, town administration spots, or is it all open parking? Do we know that yet? I, I don't think we've much well. You can't hide back there, Chief. I just heard parking. Pardon? I just heard parking. I mean, okay, so the question was, Chief, um, will there be designated parking spots? That obviously, those there will be. Um, handicapped accessible spots that by law that will happen right. to be there. Will there be uh, reserved spots for like visiting the police, for visiting town hall, or it's just going to be all open? And what about like say staff parking, I guess? But if you look at the the drawing in the handout here, you're parking at the front of the building for police and or town folk. And on the right hand side, which is the main entrance for the town hall, you have two rows of parking on that side of the building as well, which could be employees, visitors, guests. But the, the, the illustration only shows 30 parking spaces. As you indicate, as uh, Groen said tonight, you could put 50, theoretically put 50 parking spaces on there. But the drawing just indicates 30 at this point. All the next day, sorry. Um, with the current bond that we have for the fire department, their truck that they got last year, what would be the total um, tax impact between the two bonds, and how long would we have both bonds going to occur? Combined, we haven't done combined. For, 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 um, for the, um, we have the budget. 
the most recent copy of the budget. I, I can tell you what debt service is for the budget currently. Approximately thirty thousand. So then, do you know what the debt service is currently? Yeah, it's about eighty thousand. Eighty, okay. okay. But I don't what's have important problem. to understand is that there are really are three, three current uh, loans, uh, two through the municipal bond bank. One is ten years at about one hundred at one hundred ninety thousand. That's the transfer station, so that will go on. I think this is the first year of payment, so that will go on a conditional conditional nine years. I think the fire engine turned out to be three hundred and let's say $50,000, and that was up for 15 years. And those are declining payments. And that's another, that's sort of another thing. I mean, it, you, can, you can choose to have your payment either come down or stay fixed across the years, and it has an impact on your interest rates. And so, you know, where you at end up getting the loan has an impact. But anyway, so, those, so it's a 10-year on the transfer station for 190000 15 years on the fire station, fire truck for about 350000 And then it was a USDA loan with a fixed price of, I think, 17000 a year for 30 years. So we're in the year 28 for that. So oh, that one was several hundred, couple, several hundred thousand. Of, I so don't, I don't so we have not, if we move forward, clearly, with the um, with this on the ballot, we would um, for a deliberative session, which is February second, we would have that information for, for folks. But at this point, we, we we have not done that. And based on your bonds last year and their fees, do you have a projected bond fee schedule or anything now estimates, or is that going to come at the deliberative session for this project? Yes, they're on the table over there. That's so right. At the beginning of the meeting, I don't remember who I apologized, but someone asked what the um, actually I think it might have been Angela asked um, what the um, what the rate was and what the, the cost would be over the and does that tax include, Like time of the town staff to put together the bond? Like no, 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 no. That's just the actual what what the bond schedule is, and that's on the table over there. It also doesn't include the cost of um, retaining a bond council. And there are costs associated with that as well. Do you have a few more, or yeah, might be some um, of the folks that want to? Oh, does the police have the option of bringing dispatch in-house so we don't have to contract out with other communities? <laughs> um, that really doesn't have anything to do with the physical building, the bonding of this building, but I can tell you that it would be a heck of a lot more expensive to, to do our own dispatching than it would be to... You can ask the cities of Dover, Rochester, Summers, with how expensive it is, and, and the I, town of Durham. So. I guess this, the committee looked at how much it would cost to contract out. Is that an astronomical fee compared to the building? The, uh, the, the Space Needs Committee did look at it um, two years ago. Charlie Putnam actually um, investigated that for us. Um, I don't want to put him on the spot, but I, as I recall, it was... Um, either uh, prohibitively expensive in one case, um, non-existent in another. I'm speaking of uh, the, the options of either having Summersworth, Dover, the county or the state police cover, no one was really interested. And if they were interested, we couldn't afford it. So compared to what we were paying currently for police services. Uh, for right now, my last question is, is, we've heard from the public that putting the two buildings, the town hall and the town hall administration and the Police Department in one is a great idea. How does the town officials weigh in on this? We haven't heard from the town clerk or the tax collector, from my knowledge. Well, I'm going to put this, I don't want to put this in a flip way. They're residents and they could be here tonight. I don't see, I don't think I see them, so I don't know. They have not approached me as a board member. I don't want to speak for the other two, but I, I don't know if they've approached them. I don't know how they feel about it. Is that, are you good for now? Okay. Well, I have a question for the building committee. Um, did you folks look at tying into sewer rather than having a septic system? I know it's not sewer on Silver Street, but directly out back, 
I mean, it. it Chief, you want to talk about we, we actually did look at that, and they said it would, it would be very expensive because you can't just have the pipe go straight across, across the ravine. It would have to go down, a pump at the bottom, to shoot it back up to get it over to the Soda Street property. And the expense was maintaining that pump, because that's going to run 24 7 with your power or not. So. Think or the subject just for that size of the number of people you're going to have in it would, would be expensive. The second thing is, anybody that's been in this town for 25 years or more, and there's quite a few sitting in this room, I think that the, the White Elephant, the town hall, has been nothing but a money pit. I mean, I'd like to know what we dropped in it. It's got to be close to what? 1.5? If not more? You guys say more? Okay. And we certainly didn't get the time frame on it, but we thought we were going to get. And I also we kind of we kind of get on to the uh, to grow in there. We've been talking about his subs. Well, a lot of the attitude of poor workmanship is a result of that white building. I think the people that worked in there, I don't think purposely did bad work, but I don't think we got our money's worth. So, you know, food for thought. And I see a lot of people shaking their heads. Do they agree with me? But I still would like to have you give us choices. Now, I like choices. Anybody here don't like choices? I don't hear nothing. I can't see who's next. Did you have your hand up, Mark? Yeah. And then I can't see who's next. Who to be next. Oh, oh, there I didn't see. I can't see past people's heads. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm short. Sure. I can't see, so we're very comfortable. With that. My name is Larry Larkin. I live in Parkers Lane. I lived in town 30 something years. A long time ago, I voted to put money into the town hall. And I was new in town, and the town hall is kind of like a teddy bear. You know, we all had a teddy bear, and as you get older, you didn't want to let it go. And that's what we were doing. We, we voted, uh, we spent, we were going to spend $700,000, it was $1.2 million. The tower still leaked, the water going through the police department. All the time, and, and by the way, no matter how much parking, if we build this new place, it's going to be more than you have now. All we do is let's wait, let's do this, let's let's find out if we can. We've been doing that as long as I lived in town. I'm three quarters of the way down, more than that, down the checkout line. There was one thing I thought that's not going to go away before I die. Now I find out there's two: the wars we we're fighting and the town hall being built. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do it. I mean, we've been dumbing around for years trying to fix that place. It's not healthy in the police department. The slope of the roof, the snow must come down on, on a, basically you got a lean-to on the side of the building, right? you got to do it. Years ago, uh, Mark Kutcher, sons of the road. Uh, years ago, I, I sat in and was involved with the uh, Town Hall and uh, uh, the, the historical group was involved in it. And uh, they went around looking at other town halls. Uh, Wakefield was built by the uh, same architect. Uh, New Durham, uh, Alton. Uh, I don't know why it's called. But anyway, they renovated their town halls and they did a great job. Uh, so, we recommended an architect, and then, uh, that was the end of it. Well, here again, I'm not knocking the selectmen that were involved at the time, but it was, they wanted to do it on the cheap, and they did. And they went with other architects, you had a contractor, and, and you, you didn't have any clerk of the words, you had nobody watching over these guys, they took us to the cleaners. All right? So, so that's what you end up with when you don't do the job right. That's the first thing I'd like to say. The second thing, I, 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 I don't know why we're not going ahead and looking at a police facility by itself. 
and, and the town hall staying there uh, with the town offices. We let the police facility go on Silver Street and, and just go with that. And then uh, we have extra space to use them downstairs for storage or whatever. So that's just my thought. Uh, so, as your town moderator, I, I abstained on the recommendation that the, that the uh, uh, Space Needs Committee made because I wanted to get to town meeting and have the body be able to let me moderate your meeting or, or decide that you didn't want me to moderate your meeting. So, I'm not expressing a position for or against this bond proposal. Um, I did want to clarify um, the statement. Um, I was the member of the committee that looked into the possibility of contracted police services. I, I think, I don't, I can't get access to my emails right now. I think I summarized it in an email for the police, uh, uh, for the committee. Uh, I, I think the bottom line was that it was not a money saver for the town, um, in part because um, uh, other towns pay their officers more. Uh, and other towns have built new police facilities, so they're paying for their own facility and that would be reflected in the uh, rates for contracted services. I don't know that the result was that it was prohibitively expensive. It was that we didn't find that, that there was enough advantage to it that it was worth, worth our time to continue examining that, examining that um, option. I, I have a couple questions, too, that I uh, hope can be answered. Um, but certainly, as, as Kim mentioned earlier, time is money. So one of the first questions, the first question I want to ask is, if, the, if this goes forward as a 2.4, 2.5 million bond, what happens when we find out that that's not really enough to do everything that needs to be done? How do we raise the other funds? I mean, we have a nice building. Everyone's all set to go, and suddenly, well, we, can't, we, we didn't do this. We needed to do civil engineering. We needed to do this. We needed to do that. If we didn't think about this aspect of the move. We didn't think about housing the police somewhere else while they were being moved. What happens then? What is our recourse to, to raise more money? So that's a question I would like to have answered. And, and the second thing I just want to throw out, I believe we heard on Saturday that South Berwick Police Station, which I think is not that far away, maybe a mile, uh, was overbuilt. Is it possible for us, for our police station, for us, for the town, to contract space with them so that our police can get out of the position they're in and just have space over there? I'm just uh, just curious as to throwing that I will out. take up the last question first. I think if it were not for the Salmon Falls River and what that delineates, the state boundary, you may be able to actually go over and share a facility, but because there's different licensing issues, we've talked about this in the past, it, it's difficult as it is if, if, if someone from our department or their department needs to come over here and, and do something, let alone be housed there. So I, I don't, that was, we've talked about that. Do you want to? It's like we have no authority whatsoever in the state of Maine. Right. And technically, we have no authority outside the jurisdiction of Rollinsford unless that community invites us in in a police function. I, I, I'm not asking about having authority. I'm asking about having our being housed there but working only in Rollinsford. It, it, we can't transport folks from Rollinsford into the state of Maine. Right. Okay, so, um, okay. It's not a practical solution. But, so, and your first question was, Costs. So um, there are a few things I'd say about that. Um, the um, the proposal from um, from the folks at Rowan um, has been described to us as sort of the soup to nuts um, <coughs> approach. That um, if they say it costs, I don't know, what, two point. Not, not everything associated with this cost, this 2.4, is just instruction. There are some, um, what did I see on here? There are some other costs associated with it, um, outfitting, that sort of thing. It, but with the physical plant, um, the cost is the cost, and they won't, they're not allowed to go over once the, con thank you, once the contract's been issued. But if you see on the, on the, um, the sheet that was over there, there's a multi-packet, um, there's a whole list of things that's included, but your point is well taken about additional costs um, as far as um, 
civil engineering. Um, I think it would be brief. That's just my opinion. I don't want to really offer my opinion much here because I'm supposed to be listening to you all, but I think it's pretty foolhardy to ask you to spend two and a half million dollars and not have a civil engineering plan. Um, I think that's how you get into what we got into, what was just brought up by, by another resident. It would be pretty foolish to just sort of steam ahead not really knowing but, uh, what the ground is like, but what the drainage is like. But um, uh, that's just my one person's opinion. Um, there could be... So if we were to move forward with this, if we were going to place this on the ballot, um, we won't take a position this evening. We're going to vote on it next Monday. We're going to hold a special meeting on the holiday just to deal with the warrant. Um, in that time, we would try to come up with uh, additional, if we were going to put it on the ballot, additional costs uh, that would be associated with the plan and try to do the best, I hate to use the word, but best guess as to what it might cost. Um, I don't mean that as, as not just a guess. We would do some research and buy, contact some civil engineering firms that we've worked with in the past and get an estimate how much that, that may cost. I think that the, what the, the folks from Growing this evening said is probably a pretty accurate number of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Given our past experience with engineering reports we've had done for other projects in the town, I think that probably makes sense. Um, but we would try to do our best to factor that in. If an emergency came up, um, we would have to uh, uh, petition the Superior Court and ask for a special, a special meeting. I don't know what that looks like anymore, given our new system of, uh, of, um, um, uh, of elections. Um, we're all still trying to learn as we go throughout this process. Um, you all on the school side have had more experience and uh, a few more staff members to, uh, to assist with that process than we have. So. Um, we're still trying to figure that out. It would be a little bit of research and our, 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 our best information we have moving forward and then and, and hoping that we've got it right, I guess is the best I can put it to you. I can't give you more definitive answer, I'm sorry. Kim? Yeah. Uh, so, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, my comment is that I um, so my comment about the South Harbor Town Hall was that, not that it was overbuilt, that they built it without considering the, um, the town hall. And so now people in town are trying to figure out, now we have two buildings with, you know, a handful of people in each building, you know, you have to maintain um, and operate both those buildings. So that was one of the reasons, um, as a member of the Space Needs Committee, that we also decided that option two was the best option because it doesn't make sense um, to put a million dollars into the town hall, um, up to a million dollars, I'm going to guess, um, to maintain that building, another set of uh, all utilities, everything, and then have the building on Silver Street as well. So you're still going to end up putting money into that building and uh, some unknown dollars. Um, so my, my other thing was, I was pretty sure that we had some numbers from Banwell um, on those options, and I'll, I'll try to dig those out because I was part of, I was pretty active in that meeting as well. Um, and then I think Bob will also uh, confirm that there is a little bit of money um, in that bond um, in the event we had engineering costs of fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. I think there's a little bit of room in there, Bob. Could you? Speak yeah, to we've left. Uh, we've added a, con a contingency line item. Uh, along with you know furnishings and equipment, and there, there should be, and I would not expect that there would be enough money in that line yeah. for and for the civil study uh, for that property. Um, and so, and my last is a, is a question: um, If this um, town decided to vote for this building, this project, are we committed to that? Um, could does the select board have the authority to say? You know, although the voters approved it, can we take three months to get costs um, to repair the existing building? Um, I think it's on the select board to decide when and if that project moves forward um, in in the following year. We would well, we would want to consult with bond council as to. There's a lot of moving parts of the question you just asked. I think the probably the. Short answer, though, not the complete.
complete answer is that it would be up to the board's discretion as to say when construction was going to start. Um, that being said, the bonds are issued, what, three times a year, four times a year? It's not two times a year, two times a year, right. So you, um, you, need, to, you need to make sure you, you, you make the mark. So, uh, um, so I don't know when, when it's in May and when it's the... Uh, So that, all right, so. So are we committed to build that building if the voters approve it? Can the select board get an estimate yeah. um, say we get an estimate on that building, um, it's significantly lower, so we say no, it's not building. Can you guys make that decision and not build it? Let me, I want to, I want to understand your question. Yeah. I, I think I understand the general process. If we, we were going to bond $2.5 million and it came out to be $2 million, is that what you're saying? Can we, can we change things? Or I'm not understanding your question. So the question is, is if the voters approve this um, project, yeah. are, are we committed to building it? So if we went out and got an estimate that to fix the town hall for $500,000 and it made sense, could we fix this project? Well, you could, sure, I guess. Um, but let's let, let's be clear. You're going to be spending an awful lot of money before this to go through to, to work your way through bond council. It's going to cost a lot of money up to that point. I mean, it would have to be extraordinary circumstances to, to not go forward with with a, a bond a bond or vote. And at what point are we committing ourselves right. to the bond? Because basically, to do this, you're getting bond approval, and by the time you're voting on it, at some point, and Suzanne may be able to speak better to this, but you're you're committed because there's a bond sale considering right. this project. So, well, you know that may be technically possible. You're going to have administrative costs, about. but maybe even fees for backing out. Right. So I mean, it may not be feasible, but I mean, I think it's back to it, it's a whole new different scenario because there's a bond involved. It's not as simple as like. A couple of years ago, we were going to buy a truck, a, high, a small little utility truck, and we didn't do it because it didn't work out in the schedule, and we just didn't do it. Well, so, what I'm suggesting is maybe we take, you know, two or three months. No, no, I get what you're saying now for sure. Yeah, no, I understand that, but if you want to move forward on this, you have to engage bond, bond council um, now, immediately. So, they're going to be costs you're going to start incurring, and once the ball starts rolling, it's not quite as simple as stopping it. It's not, it's not a normal. Or sort of quote of a normal uh, Warren article. It's not as simple as trying to go out and buy a, I don't know, a snow plow or something. It, it's there's a lot more. There's a lot more moving parts to it. So I don't think it can. I mean, maybe technically you can, but I don't think it's. it's it, I, I can't say that. I, I, I'm going to retract that. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that it, it would be advisable once you start engaging bond council to do that either. I think there, there's got to be some sort of liability on the town. As far as fines and things, if you don't meet your commitment, so I, I also don't want to cost the town more money if that's the case. So, um, why do we have to engage them immediately? What's the reason for that? Because there's a there's a, a set practice, industry practice, and in state law that requires certain things have to be done to issue bonds in the state of New Hampshire. And, and I don't mind deferring to the person that managed it the last time we did it. It's a pretty detailed process. I mean. It's, it's not quite as simple as just going out of the bank and saying you want to borrow some money. If it's right. So it's, a, it's an intriguing thought, but the things that you have to consider, and Michael is absolutely correct, that I, I mean, the town has already contacted bond council in order to get proper wording for the town warrant. So this is the process that starts right away. And so what happens is you're going to the town it, is going to need to engage with a uh, uh, the services of the bond council, and that's going to be a contract. And so it's going to be, uh, it was like ten or ten thousand dollars, I think, the last time for bond council, and that was for a million dollars. And so I think it, it, it yeah, it, it relates to that. A couple years, it relates to how much you're bonding. What the bond council does is it, it is the, even though we are the ones who have to pay for it, but it is there to certify to your either loan, your bank. Or your the bond, New Hampshire Bond Bank, or whatever, that we are solvent, that we're not going to make a profit on the money that we're doing. There's all of these kinds of things that, that take place. And so you've got 
if some, and when you start to apply for the for the bond itself, and the next uh, bond sale I think is in June. So there's some kind of commitment that happens. I, I don't know exactly when, but it's difficult for you to just say, "Oops, sorry, didn't, didn't mean it." So, but I don't know exactly how far in advance it is. But the other thing to consider is that. Uh, Growing is probably going to want us to sign a contract at some point in order to freeze or guarantee or whatever the amount that he is. So, so there's that to consider too. He may, you know, he, he says, well, if you can't tell me until June, then the price, uh, then I don't know what that price will be. We'll have to consider that. And as long as I have the floor, just there is another question. I, I want to just ask. So I'm just saying, we finish with your, your questions, Kim. Sorry, did you have to? So just so I'm clear. So, so I'll come right back to Susan. So we would have to engage um, in the bond sale in June. So the bond sale happens in June. The process, the application process, happens like starting now. Well, so is it prescribed that we have to do it by after the vote by a certain day? We need to engage bond council. Now the bond council, you're going to have to engage it now. The bond council is not the municipal bond bank. Okay. So the bond council is an attorney that we hire in order to certify to either the bond bank or Kennebuck Savings or whoever's going to loan us the money that, you know, that we're a good, you know, we've done this, we've had our public hearings, we uh, put it in the newspaper with the board that have to certify 33,000 gazillion things. So, so bond council has to get hired, you know, pretty much right away. The, the, the bond sale is in June or July, with payment in July, something like that. And so, you know, that's why you have to engage with bond council, you know, reasonably soon. Uh, did I answer, did, did you have another question? I'm not sure I fully answered it. Um, so I, I don't get that we are 100% committed to the project if it gets voted on. It seems like there may be some costs involved, but we're not necessarily locked into building this building. So that, that would be true. Uh, I would say yes. I mean, we did, if if something were to transpire, uh, we would you'd probably be out some amount of money to bond council. But that's not the end of the. I don't believe the warrant compels the board to execute it. It just gives them the authority to execute it. That's how other warrants transpire. So I I don't want to be. I'm not the font of all wisdom on that. That's how I would interpret it. So, so as I said before, there, there would be a cost to us. There would be penalties associated with not moving forward. We would, we would lose money, and that we've invested by engaging bond council. So, uh, there's lots of hands up. I'm sorry. Carrie hasn't spoken at all yet, so you get to go first. Hi, um, Carrie Glass, Road. Um, just a question about the bond. So, if we have to engage with bond council now or soon. We're doing it before the vote, so it could, the warrant article could be voted down anyway after we engage, so it seems like you're still, either, either way you're paying a penalty or customs. There would still be some money that we're putting out now. I think that's probably a true statement, but as Caroline just reminded me, that the, the, uh, the wording on on the on the bond is whether contingent upon funding, right? So that goes along with the contract for bond council as well. You're still gonna, you're still going to be out. We may not be obligated, but you'll still be out money to the bond council. I don't know what the, co the actual contract will say whether or not if we don't move, if we just if we decide not to move forward, we still may be on the hook for paying her her full ten thousand or whatever. I mean, the, I'm, I'm sure just, that not deciding to move forward is quite different than not voting not voting it up, food. voting for it, correct. Right, I mean, they, then bond council, I, mean, I was misunderstanding your question, bond council understands that it's at the, the, the mercy of the voters. If the voters say no, well, then they understand that we're not moving forward, so there shouldn't be a penalty there. But if we just up and decide that, okay, well, we've gone so far, we decide we don't want to do it now, there would be a cost associated with that. Is it as much as going forward with a $2.5 million bond? Of course not. But, Sonny. Yeah, this is Sonny Cooper. I'm not sure in case we should need more money, why can't we just petition, petition the Supreme Court, I mean the uh, county court, and have another town hall meeting in, say, June or, or sometime in May when all the questions are answered? 
you know, I, I don't, I don't know that um, just postponing because we want more information rises to the level of being able to request a special uh, town meeting. I don't know if it does or not. Charlie, can you answer that? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the safest, smartest thing answer I've heard all tonight. So, who else? There are other hands. I'm sorry. I don't want to. Go ahead, Mr. Short. Just one last comment. I've been living in town for about 50 years this time. And my mother was born in town, my grandfather was born in town, my great grandfather was born in town. And I, for one, have never voted to put a cent in that town hall. It's like pouring money down a well. And that's what you get down there underneath a well. Because I've been down there many times myself looking at it when I was working for the water department. I think that what we want to decide here is not how we're going to get the money, either. all the bonds and all that stuff. That's not our question what to do. Do we want the town hall? A new town hall, a new police station, and I say we do. We need it. Hey, it's my thunder. Red Roads Prospect Street. Uh, I haven't lived here near as long, uh, just four or four years or so, but I've, I've known about this issue for the last two years. So I mean, I've been hearing about it, I've been reading about it. So it's no surprise to me about this. Um, and, yeah, he's my thunder. <laughs> Yeah, I like town hall, I like the way it looks, but it's throwing money. It's like feeding my wood stove with my paycheck. No one to do it. Um, there's needs and there's wants. Police station, definitely need. That's about it. That's all I've got to say. We need a police station. We need, we need the proper facilities to, to service the town. All right, anything else? Yes, yes. I've got to say a little bit if you want to. I've been here for, since 19. I believe that we put enough money in that town hall. And anybody on the select board that's been around for a long time, they know. And I believe that we need that police station in the town hall. Thank you. That's Terry Brown. Terry Boyle, Clement Road. Um, I just, I would hope that the select board would put it forward as a norm and leave it up to the voters. Um, I mean, it's a good turnout here today, um, but I think. I think we should leave it up to the voters and at least put the warrant forward. Okay, it's now uh, 8 o'clock, or just about. I don't want to cut off if people have something new or more questions, but we do have another public hearing after this one. Mm -hmm. We still have to hold, and we, we still have to have a, our weekly meeting. Um, but sure, one more. So there was some concern about um, whether or not this building was big enough to accommodate the staff. Um, if you look at the floor plans and you look at space now. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's significantly bigger, but it's certainly bigger. Um, and there is some room for growth. Um, so I didn't personally have any concerns about the floor plan. Um, it, you know, it, it would give them more space than they have now, for sure. Anyone else? Yes, Celia. I have one question that came up earlier. When it was asked if the police station could rent from um, South Corwick. Can they rent space during the move somewhere here in town, like at the mill, during the move to Um, And my other question is, if you have to keep the town hall, South Forward, let's give them as an example, doesn't have a whole lot of people there. But they have room at the top where they use the um, facilities for town functions. I know at least three or four town functions have been there for and I'm concerned that this does not offer any space to remedy the plan. It's not offering space to remedy town meetings that we're holding here for at the school. Where will we have the facility to hold large meetings? That's my concern. I don't know what the second part is. There is a space that's proposed uh, downstairs and upstairs. I, I don't know what the sizes are in there. Your first part of your question was. And they rent oh, I, I, I don't know why they would need to because if, you, uh, if you're if you building a new building, you're not going to be displacing them from the building they're in now. So I don't think they would need to rent anything. But I don't really know 100%, but I would assume that would be the case. Anyone else on this one? Because I'd love to open the public hearing on the next one. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Main Street. If we sell the town hall, they get the somebody else's problem. 
Uh, are there any caveats we can put in, and whether it's our lawyer or something, I'm sure that they deserve the integrity because once it's gone, it's gone. But, you know, I mean, I know, you know, you said it's a big area. If people go, well, we used to be a town hall there, but we had one, and it's gone now. Uh, is, you know, is there any, you could probably look at that as a stumbling block because, you know, maybe people might not want to buy it. But right. I mean, it's a big deal. To, right. can't go that far. To, I mean, you could. Be, at least you like the upstairs with this other right. playhouse. Right, right. Um, Protective covenants could yeah. be put in, I guess, at the sale, but you're probably right. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, if we were going to go that route, we would we would obviously need to find out that information uh, clearly. Um, it's, um, but I'm not sure if that's the route we're going to go down yet. But if we do, then yes, that would be something we would want to explore because clearly there is historical significance to that building, and I think Mark mentioned it. There are four examples of, by this architect whose name is not escaping me uh, in this in this thank you in this area, um, and um, you know if, I don't know I, if my roof has a hole in it I fix it, but you know what that wasn't always the case. Well, I'm from, originally I've been here 25 years, but I'm from yeah. Boston. We had a beautiful uh, train station, uh, one station. Once it's gone, it's gone. And, uh, that's got me both strip mall. Yeah. You know, that was during the early renewal. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, like you said, we got a lot of money in but if someone else buys it. Yeah, well, also, if you maintain your assets all along, it doesn't cost you much to fix them up when you go forward, but that's the only comment I'm going to make tonight. Okay, Lorraine, you're going to get the last word, but I want to open up the other public hearing. I, I noticed that the chief, Lorraine, has to watch it.